Welcome to the Chasing Gold Olympics podcast. I'm your host, Muck Bill Yabro, joined by my co-host, Mike Covey. What's going on, Mike? What's good, Swizzy? All right? Good, brother. How are you? I'm good. I'm good, man. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we are here. Today officially concludes our Olympic series with the month-long games in France's capital, Paris. Uh, they officially came to an end on Sunday. Now, we look to use this episode to bring you closer to some African athletes who made Olympic history. Now, among those, we're going to start off the show with Olympic Boxing. Now, this is a field where Africans dominated, and included of those is uh, David Binga. Uh, he won Cape Verde's first ever Olympic medal uh, after he finished third and won the bronze. Now, prior to qualifying to the Olympics, Binga actually contemplated retiring from boxing as the burden of making ends meet and caring for his family was becoming heavy on his shoulders. But this has since changed. Uh, through his persistence, he is now an Olympic bronze medalist. But now for insight on uh, Bina's historic moment at the Paris Olympics, let's listen to an interview that he had with VOA's Alvaro Andrade. So, uh, processar está a ser lento. E ainda não, não, não caí na realidade. I'm still processing it, and it's being slow. I still haven't realized what I did. The first Olympic medal for my country, a medal for Africa. I thank the Cape Verdean Olympic Committee who invested in me, and today we are known in the world in Africa. When I competed in Thailand, where we had a great performance above our average, 99% of the coaches told us, you can achieve an Olympic medal in Paris. So we started to believe that it was possible for Cap Verde to win a medal. We came back and trained with the goal of winning a medal. In Paris, during the first fight against the Thai boxer, we won. Also with the African champion from Zambia, who has many titles, we showed that we have a lot of talent. We believed, we dreamed, and we won a medal. What a punch, ladies and gentlemen. What a punch. Uh, that there was a uh, Cape Verdean Olympic boxer, David Pina, speaking to Alvaro Andrade. Uh, he was in France's capital, Paris. Mike, speaking of boxing and its growth in Africa, Cindy Ngamba, a Cameroonian boxer who was part of the Olympics refugee team, was among those who won a medal in Paris. She also made history by becoming the first refugee to secure an Olympic medal. Let's take a listen to what she had to say. It means the world to me, man. It means the world to me to be the first ever refugee athlete to win a medal and to have qualified for the Olympic. And my, my goal obviously was to win a gold medal, but I, I didn't come. I came a bit short against the Panama girl. But listen, I'm, I'm overwhelmed with the loads of emotion, positive emotion. I managed to uh, get myself a medal. My aim was to get a medal, but uh, yeah, I'm just it's an honor, man. Still sinking in. I have my story only. Um, I have my obstacles, my strife. I can only speak for myself, um, and I hope that my story kind of motivate all the refugees, athletes, and refugees in general, any human in general. Because let's not forget, I'm a human at the end of the day, just like any other human around the world that goes through obstacles and strives through life, and there's the light at the end of the tunnel. And uh, I just hope that my my story. I don't really like to call myself a role model, because I'm not. I'm just human. I have the goals and the aim, and I just aim for it to hard work and dedication and. Belief in myself and God in God and um, having God by my side and um, yeah I can only see speak for myself and I hope many people all around the world I can be kind of a motivation I don't like to say motivation because but I can be kind of motivation for people but yeah that was Cindy Mbanga a Cameroonian refugee boxer who made history at the Paris Olympics yeah, Mokbo. Now, Cindy is not the only uh, African woman who made history at the Paris Olympics. We also have Iman Khalif, an Algerian boxer who won gold 
at the Paris Olympics. Now, this is amid challenges from the public and the International Boxing Association, IBA. Uh, she, uh, this is while she was progressing through the Olympics. Now, uh, Khalif's gender was questioned by many fans and commentators. This happened while she won an Olympic uh, bout against it her Italian counterparts in less than a minute. 60 seconds was. Uh, thereafter, discussions on whether or not she should be included in the Paris Olympics came into play. Uh, as the IBA said, Khalif was suspended from participating in the 2000. 23 World Championships. This was after she failed a gender test uh, for having too much testosterone. Nonetheless, the International uh, Olympic Committee, the IOC, an organization whose values are not aligned with the IBA, allowed P Khalif to participate in the Games in France. Let's listen to a report which uh, details more on the Algerian gold medalist. Boxing coach Mohamed Shaoua points to a photo of a young Amman Khalif. Shaoua says the Algerian boxer worked hard to get to where she is today and is the victim of a power struggle for control of the sport. The storm surrounding her erupted after her Italian opponent, Angela Carini, pulled out of their round of 16 Olympic bout after 46 seconds, during which she came under a barrage of punches. Shaoua says Khalif has felt the impact of the controversy. <laughs> Iman knows herself, but there are questions in her head and she asks, why me? She was very affected by this. In the end, she was dragged into this campaign, but she taught them a lesson in ethics and in sports. Khalif has been able to take part in the Games after the International Olympic Committee, the IOC, stripped the International Boxing Association, or IBA, of its status as the sport's governing body and took control of organizing the boxing in Paris. At a shambolic press conference on Monday, the IBA said that Khalif and Taiwanese boxer Lin Yuting had been disqualified from the 2023 World Championships after a sex chromosome test ruled both of them ineligible. The IOC says the genetic tests imposed on Khalif and Lin were conducted without due process and were flawed. Here is IOC President Thomas Bach. We have uh, two boxers who are born as women who have been raised as a woman, who have a passport as a woman, and who have competed for many years as women. And this is the clear definition of a woman. There was never any doubt about them being a woman. The IOC says the IBA is a discredited organization, mired in financial opaqueness and compromised by ties to the Russian leadership. The IBA maintains it acted to protect women boxers. Minky Warden of Human Rights Watch says it's sad to see the issue emerge as a storyline in Paris. For many decades, women uh, and ath athletes in particular have been scrutinized about how they look. We've seen the online abuse, um, including by state actors, of these of women who are just trying to compete for their country. It's, it's shocking and actually quite unprecedented. The IOC has urged the boxing community to create a new global governing body or risk the sport missing out on the Los Angeles Olympics in 2028. <laughs> Shaua, who has coached Khalif since she was a teenager, said she came fifth in her category at the Tokyo Games and has not always won her fights. Our mission from the beginning was for sports, and they dragged us into a struggle. That was a report produced by Reuters, which speaks on Khalif's journey at the Paris Olympics. Mike. Before we go to the half, I'd like to spotlight one more feel-good African story at the Paris Olympics. Algeria won another gold medal, but this time in sport, typically dominated by the U.S. Here, I'm talking about gymnastics. French Algerian Olympian Kilia Nimour is a 17-year-old dual citizen who switched allegiances to represent the North African nation following a dispute with the French Gymnastics Federation, which did not clear her to compete at the Paris Games following an injury. This motivated her decision to represent Algeria. Let's take a listen to a short clip where she speaks on her achievement of winning a gold medal for Algeria and what this means for her relationship with the French Gymnastics Federation. Uh, I'm really happy 
I am delighted to have won this medal for Algeria. It is the first medal for Africa, so I am so grateful for this win, and I am proud to have won this medal for them. I am delighted to be part of the team and all the Algerian country is supporting me. And I'm so happy to be able to represent Algeria and to be able to provide and give this medal to the whole of Algeria. Yes, I had the Olympic medal as a screensaver on my phone. And now, um, I'll be now changing it to put the real, the real image of the real Olympic medal. And now to go back to the French team. Yes, it was. Um, it's very sad for the French team to not get on the podium, but this is how things are. That was Kalia Nimor, a French Algerian Olympic gymnast who won gold for Algeria at the Paris Olympics. With that in mind, Let's go to a quick break. When we come back, we'll continue talking about Africa's performances at the Paris Olympics alongside a special guest who will be in the studio for, with us for the remainder of the show. We'll be right back. You're watching VOS Red Carpet. My name is Jackson Vungani. Thank you so much for joining us each week right here on Red Carpet. We'll bring you the latest in... medical breakthroughs. Healthy Living cares about your well-being. What are the main health concerns in Africa and around the world? Find out the latest on coronavirus. Connect with our experts and ask them questions. How long does the virus stay? Join me, Lino Khmudu, in Washington every week on Healthy Living, right here on VOA. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. If you're still with us, uh, you're tuned into the final episode of Chasing Gold Olympics uh, 2024. Now, at the Paris Olympics, uh, Africa made history multiple times. Now, included in the teams that made their mark at the Games in France uh, was Nigeria's De Tigris. Now, this is a West African nation's women's national basketball team. Uh, but their ranks were also joined by South Sudan's uh, Bright Star. Now, uh, both nations failed to medal. But Nigeria finished in the quarterfinals, a first for Africa, and South Sudan uh, concluded their campaign ranked nine in their first ever appearance at the Olympics. Now, to help us unpack uh, what this means for the growth of our African basketball, we're joined in studio by Sheikh Tiero, our colleague from VOA Bambara, and of course, he is the big man from Bamako. Sheikh, what's good, brother? Man, not much, man. Glad to be on this yes. call. No, we're excited. We're excited. Um, let's delve into it. Um, there were so many things that happened when we're talking about basketball. Uh, we'll start off with the women, right? Women first. Yeah. Uh, um, Nigeria, the Tigres, making history for the continent, taking the continent the furthest, the quarterfinals. Um, their coach was named coach of the tournament of the Paris Olympics. Uh, let's start off there. What were your thoughts when you watched them perform, man? Man, when I watched that game, uh, uh, Mike, you know, I really they were present well. You know, Nigeria has been on top teams and coming out of Africa. And they all, every year they go represented us in there. I mean, this is the second or the third time. Mm -hmm. And they was able to win a game there, Mugubi. We all know how tough it is to win a game right. in, a, in the Olympic, this kind of level. Yeah. Uh, and with the tremendous coach they have that win the Afrobeat basketball with them. And mm -hmm. I think they have really, Nigeria women basketball team have a very good team. Overall, women have a very good talent in Africa more than men. Yeah, that's yeah. the that's the narrative. That's been the story yeah, that's, that's come story. out of the Olympics. Right. Yeah, that's the story. That every year they're representing us, you know, um, um, women, and uh, they win Afrobeat. They go to World Cups. They go to many, mm -hmm. many stuff. Mm -hmm. So. It was a very tremendous to see a women basketball there representing the continent. Mm -hmm. And that part I like, yeah. Yeah, Sheikh. So just kind of just continuing on that point, right? So what do you think it meant symbolically to see the Tigresses make it all the way to the quarterfinals? As we mentioned, you know, the, they're the furthest team, any African team, men or hard? women, to be able to get that far. And not only did they, they didn't give up. We watched that game against the U.S. They were down by 30 at one point, yeah. and they still pushed it. I believe they outscored the U.S. team 26 to 12 mm -hmm. in the fourth quarter. You know, 
What does it mean for basketball on the continent? And do we see initiatives like we've seen the BAL for well, hers for her, yeah. and such things on the continent move forward? Will this, you know, excite people to want to invest more in women basketball in Africa, do you think? Absolutely. Love. From what I saw in this move, Bill, um, the bas game of basketball evolving, yeah, not yeah. only Africa, everywhere. Yeah. But Africa's adapting. Usually Africa really go with... Um, you know, I'm not saying old, mm -hmm. right? But we like to catch up. Yeah, the age is very. We, when we look at all the teams, we see they bring young, 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 young bodies, right? Mm -hmm. That's what we saw with that team. Many players from that team was young, and they, of course, they have veteran. They have a lot of experience. But what I learned from this move, build Africa's adapting, mm -hmm. right? The basketball as the world is evolving with basketball, you know. And I saw, I saw that with the head coach that for that team. <laughs> And she recruit young bodies, you know, that have very experienced playing professional basketball or U.S. NCAA basketball. And, you know, those are the pieces you're gonna, you want to go with. And the future is bright because this is something just, you know, we, we mentioned ball, we're trying to have a way to include women in there. Mm -hmm. And they just haven't found the map because of some cultural background. Mm -hmm. And if, you know, you cannot write a check, you cannot cash, that kind yeah, of deal. Yeah. You don't want to start a league and there's no women to be found. Mm -hmm. That's the only reason why they're not having a team right now. They're mm -hmm. building it. And with the help of uh, ball, ball for her, mm -hmm. they have piled up with so many Africans that play in the NBA, women NBA, mm -hmm. and bring them together to figure it out a plan how they can start this. Because once it started, there's no turning back. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's the decision they have right now. But it looked good for the Africa basketball, especially women's side, you know. Speaking of that, how do we go about uh, challenging some of these cultural beliefs that, that suppress women participation? Because clearly there's a, a, a market for it, clearly there's the talent for it. How do we make sure that we empower more young women to, to step onto the stage so that we can next time go further and, and maybe medal? Yeah, I, I think uh, it's all Africa have it, for sure. You know, we all know how the women in NBA and NBA is, the differences in the culture and money and pay and everything, equal mm -hmm. pay and everything. Mm -hmm. But Africa really have young people, right? The demographic of the continent, everybody know, mm -hmm. is more young than all the people. Young it's different world. than here. Mm -hmm. So anything when you're trying to do things with anything, it's not only basketball, right. mm -hmm. <laughs> but you know, economy-wise, the youngest, the youngest group of people in, in the area, mm -hmm. the better is the chance, you know, for anything. So demographically, I think Africa is really majority is young mm -hmm. in the youth and they're very talented they're very athletic and um we saw it with the sudanese team we, we, that we're gonna get to mm -hmm. and uh the south uh, uh, the nigerian team showed that to me and they, they have a brilliant coach you know a woman coach that understands women basketball more than anybody and mm -hmm. i don't think there can be any, any better person to choose to to do that and not only nigeria there's many countries in africa that have produce big stars you know mm -hmm. um senegal mm -hmm. mali you know on um, um all those countries are coming, you know, yeah. so the, it's there. The youth is there and the talent is there. It's just for Africa to connect it because they, this Olympic show that anybody from the world can, can be participating. Yeah. Right. We saw the, the, the guy from uh, Zimbabwe went gold for the first time for right. that country. Right. So there's a start for everything. So mm -hmm. I hope this is a start for Africa to figure it out yeah. what you need to bring, you know, like Lord Deng did with the Sudanese team to bring mm -hmm. the best to represent and, and we all see what they did. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Great. Segwaying yeah. right to the South Sudanese bright yeah. stars, you know, yeah. the, bri the bright stars. So my question to you is, we've seen what they did in their very first Olympics. What do they have to do to get to that next level, you know, to be able to come out from the group? And then beyond that, what does this mean for other African teams, uh, you know, or can we get more African teams in the competition, you know, on that level? Yeah, I mean, you can, but, you know, Mubil, this thing is... Like, you know, when America go for, for Olympics, yeah. is uh, how many states in the United States? 50 over 50? Uh -huh. Yeah, 50. So yeah, 50. they select the best out of 50. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's not the case in Africa, right? Yeah, 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 facts. Right, you see right. what I mean? Facts, so, right. yeah, yeah. Uh, and, uh, Mathematically speaking. Mathematically America, speaking, so that, that, that's yeah. something that's disadvantaged Africa a lot, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, but with people like Luo Deng who have an experience, you know, understanding the continent basketball and what it takes mm -hmm. financially, physically, and you know, mentally, resources, why he understands the whole thing, because he's from there. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? For somebody like that, I understand it, that was able to pull up something together for his country is very tremendous. It's a good start for all people. We have Masai <laughs> that work for the, yeah. in the Nigeria, uh, mm -hmm. from the Toronto Raptors, mm -hmm. that can really pull something like that, people with resources. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? So, me personally, I think they haven't 
uh, there's nothing to be ashamed of mm -hmm. the first time, mm -hmm. the first time to represent Africa. Yeah. And I want to remind people, all these players who grew up in overseas, in America mm -hmm. especially, most of whom went to school in basketball here, mm -hmm. and they have this very, like, move, move, you know, interesting background mm -hmm. from the that difficult type of life they have been going through, not only Sudan, Africa, I think overall have that, you know, and sports is a way to really get away with that and show different images mm -hmm. to people, you know what I'm saying, what is need to be done. But me personally, what I would say on gross and final that what they can do better next year, mm -hmm. you know, you cannot predict next year, but right. they, they, they could do, I don't think anything they've done, you know what I'm saying, that was wrong for them to be, it was just short. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? And, yeah. And uh, if there is a recruitment side to think of it, but that's really big because Africa is a continent right. and every country is separate, it's not like United States as a whole, mm -hmm. you know? So that part is really big for, for anybody to do something. But this competitiveness is there. Mm -hmm. We saw the ball having producing many players. Mm -hmm. And if you have to go by country, it will be very difficult to come up with a team like United States. Right. Yeah. Very right. difficult. Yeah, and yeah. honestly, just to, just to quickly touch on before your question, Mike, to me, like you said, they have nothing to be ashamed of, right? Yeah. They were in a group with the gold medalist team and the yeah. bronze medalist teams, and they played well, <laughs> you know, against both. So hats off to them. If they're in a different group, you know, they it's, it's, they it's, 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 it's a it. lot easier yeah, to come out. You know, it could have been a different, yeah. Or even wear right. gold or, or silver. <laughs> right, right. You know, it could have been a different situation. So yeah. they unfortunately happened to be in what I consider to be the group of death, you know. You have yeah. the number one ranked team in the world with the number four ranked team Serbia. in the world. Yeah. Come on, man. So they yeah. did well. The yeah. pool was tough yeah. yeah. for them. Of course, speaking of the bright stars, I keep calling them black stars, so I got to take that back. It's the bright stars. But speaking of the bright stars, what I'm really intrigued by is, and I remember throughout the whole campaign, Mark and I were talking about it, is how when you look at uh, the makeup of the team, these are stars that have touched different parts of the world, right? Mm -hmm. Some of them were in BAL, and they, mm -hmm. they, the cream of the, the creme de la creme of the, mm -hmm. uh, of the tournament. Mm -hmm. What do we do moving forward to ensure that this talent is not just diaspora based? Now we have, because clearly there's the genetic makeup, there's mm -hmm. the talent in South Sudan, yeah, yeah. but how do you ensure that in the next Olympics, it's not just a diaspora based team, but you're now picking people who have time who have spent time in South Sudan, people who are playing in South Sudan, and people who are grooming more talent in South Sudan? Uh, it will be very difficult. Mm -hmm. I will go be with resources first. What is players benefit from outside of the, the continent is more than what they receive in the continent. Mm -hmm. So that's why sometimes, you know, how many games they play in NBA? Over 80? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I don't think any other league you play over 80 games yeah. a year. Yeah, I mean, PAL is what, what I'm yeah. if, if that. Yeah, games. if that. Games. So, games. so, 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 the more work out and the more like uh, talent, you know, because that creates a lot of talent. You know, we all know basketball history. The more time you put in the gym, the more results you get yeah. from it, right? Basketball is not that in Africa. Soccer is, but basketball is coming now. Mm -hmm. So, for me to really see even African teams on this Olympic is uh, amazing. is amazing. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Like, uh, because, you know, this is people who haven't done a lot of basketball, you know, and they move from. Uh, 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 camps, you know, mm -hmm. refugee camps. Some were refugees, yeah, right? You know, mm -hmm. some of them have their parents been taken away, or some crisis in there that make them flee, you know, to go play basketball. And this is people who, a majority of them are like that for South Sudan. But me personally, I think for Africa to have go with fresh body, I can call the name. It, 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 we got some cello. We have so some many players. Play, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, we got so many players in the ball. Mm -hmm that can represent Africa. Yes. But that's not the case in this. It's based by country. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? So yeah. that part is going to be very difficult and to figure it out. If Africa is able to select to go represent Africa, mm -hmm. it will be a good thing because we have many people that would like. I will give an example of Joel Embi. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. If you go to Cameroon, he's going to win oh. everybody by himself. Right. Mm -hmm. It's difficult. Mm -hmm. He's got to find body that's from Cameroon mm -hmm. specifically mm -hmm. in order to Pascal. represent him. Yeah. <laughs> Pascal Siakam, you know, and, you know, yeah, and couple other Cameroon, guys. the yeah. couple guys, you know, yeah. Yeah. that could do something. But when you look at the other teams, they go with the best. Yeah. They select. Serbian from every place, right. Europe, mm -hmm. Africa, French, the same thing. Mm -hmm. United States, NBA, yeah. Europe. We saw number seven uh, mm -hmm. for them, for the French team yeah. that played yeah. for Real Madrid. Mm -hmm. That really did really good for them. And yeah. they select from different places. And Africa doesn't have that opportunity mm -hmm. to select from distance. Mm -hmm. Like, it's got to be your nationality. Mm -hmm. right. yeah. You know, and yeah. the United States, everybody's 50, over 50 wow. states, yeah. all the same right. in the United right. States. So it's easy to select. Africa doesn't have that luxury to represent, but 
I'm really impressed by the, the selection uh, Luo Deng is. Like I told you, Mukbi is always going to come down to resources. Mm -hmm. People have to be together enough time. Yeah, so yeah. these players know each other mm -hmm. and they're well coached. And all those stuff need to be figured out by resources. So when we get that, we will definitely advance in the, in the basketball because we show mm -hmm. that we really can compete at this high level. For the US team, when the exhibition game, mm -hmm. they lost mm -hmm. by one point yeah. only. It was right and there. that game was like, you know, but when people, what, what I don't like about when people say, people think that was the only time a team come close to a United no, States. Yeah. No, yeah, yeah. Many people say that. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. remember the Nigerian right. team last right. year? Right. Yes. right. I mean, last Olympics. Yeah. They beat the United States yeah, yeah. and in scrimmage games. Mm -hmm. You know, that shows you that we have it. We just disclose the yeah, way. Right. But we need something like those, those stuff right. that are so resources mm -hmm. and, I mean, and the right to select people that are not US, are your country's citizen, mm -hmm. I think that will make a lot different about selection to represent Africa. Yeah. And, so now, uh, yeah. before we move over to the, I, I, I keep calling it Dream Team 2.0, now it's official, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I want to touch on one more thing about uh, the Bright Star. Um, they finished ranked 9 of 13. Um, as we mentioned, their resources are very limited. Uh, they recently now are starting to get government interest. Um, what do you think it looks like for Africa moving forward? If a first-time <laughs> Olympian can go this far and uh, the Tigresses can go as far as they can go, in the next Olympics, what do you think we could look like? On the next Olympic, I think uh, this case uh, is going to be four years, mm -hmm. you know, or four years adding to your career. That shouldn't be much to not come back. But they have the bodies. They have the, the players, <laughs> what it take. They have the, the, the talents. You know, the talent, the athleticism, the game, because they proved that, like, uh, you know, to now. But, um, like, it's always going to come down to who you can get or who you cannot get. Mm -hmm. You know, because you might be a best player and, uh, and a woman NBA team that play for Minnesota. You won't be able to select him to come play for you. Mm -hmm. Right. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's all going to come down to resources. And uh, that's a very geographic, geographic issue that's blocking Africa which is food potential, but no excuse. Yeah. They're doing just fine. And, but imagine if it was, they was allowed to do more stuff from that side, it would be much, much, much better for, to do better on the next Olympics. Absolutely. But there's a chance to do it, yeah. Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. Shaq. It, it's been a pleasure. You know how it goes with us. We can just keep talking <laughs> for too much longer. Unfortunately, we're going to have to say goodbye. Much appreciated, Brother, my brother. Thank you for really being on the pod no with problem. us. No problem, anytime. Yes, sir. It's a language, man. Absolutely. Yes, sir. We'll, we'll, we'll have you next time. No yeah. problem, man. Ladies and gentlemen, that was Shaker Tierro. Um, we're going to give him a shout out for joining us here on the podcast, here on the final episode of Chasing Gold Olympics at 2024. Mockbill, yes. uh, we're about to start wrapping up, brother. But uh, as we wrap up, I want to touch on several different facets of why yeah. Africa made history at this year's uh, Paris Olympics. Uh, so we're going to delve into that a little bit. Um, of course, let's start off uh, as we talk about the medal count. Not, right. So when we're talking about the medals in Africa, Africa Mukbul in total has won at least 40 medals. Now included of those, uh, we're going to talk about the highest achievers, Kenya, who had 11, mm -hmm. uh, South Africa, who had six, mm -hmm. Ethiopia, four, Egypt, Algeria, Tunisia had three. Botswana, we're going to touch on that mm -hmm. uh, briefly, and Uganda had two, Ivory Coast, Cape Verde, Zambia, and then we're going to give one more honorary salute to the refugee team who had one medal. Of course, the refugee team included was uh, Cindy, uh, who you uh, spoke, uh, spoke on earlier on. And then, of course, as we conclude, honorary shout-outs. We're going to start off with Litsile Teboho, who oh, made history for the continent. Look, goes without a look, say. Teboho, not only did he win gold in the 200 meters, but was... He ran both, he ran the 100 meter, the 200 meter, and the 400 meters. Mm -hmm. That's an unbelievable feat. People have to understand, those are three completely different types of sprints, and he did successful in, in all of them. I believe he got silver for his yes, team yes, uh, four for that four, four, by, uh, four by four, right? Yes, yes. And then we're also going to give a shout out to our Liberia's Joseph Fambule, Zimbabwe's Makanaka Ishe Charamba, <laughs> Tafiwa Nashe Makarau, and of course, South Africa's Akani Simbine. All of the people that were mentioned here were finalists uh, in the uh, two, uh, race against Teboko, a moment that was applauded by track and field people across the continent. But our time's going to be over here, bro. This is the last one, the last rodeo. Man, it's been real. It's been it's fun, been man. Real. This has been, been a real. while. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for taking time out to be with us. This is it. I conclude here. I go by the name of Mike Kobe. Have a good night. Joined by Mukbel Yavaro. Until next time. <laughs>